Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at this new product lineup from Blue Yeti. This is their AC200L. Now what I love about these units is that it's all pre-built. We have our battery, we have our AC, we have our DC out. We also have DC in and AC in as well. And this unit now also comes with a UPS mode. So you can actually use this outside of camping in order to keep your devices running in let's say an unforeseen power outage or something like that. To have a backup system like this is very key. So what sort of things can you power with this unit? Well, this has a 2,400 watt inverter pure sine wave, and it will also do 3,600 watts of surge. So what type of battery does this unit use to power everything? Well, it has 2,048 watt hours worth of battery capacity, and it uses lithium iron phosphate, which is a far superior chemistry for longevity, this will last you a very long time. This unit is currently using the 51.2 volt lithium iron phosphate chemistry battery at 40 watt hours, or commonly known as a 48 volt battery. This also is expandable. You can buy expansion packs for this unit. If this battery isn't going to be enough for you, you can also buy additional expansion packs, which connect into the side here, which we will go over a little bit more later. So what's pretty impressive is there's actually four different ways to charge this unit. So one, there's your traditional AC charging. The AC charging, you can actually do 2,400 watts of AC charging. Now for that though, you're gonna need to buy the additional twist lock cable because it's thick enough to handle the current. So the cable that actually comes with the unit itself uh, only has 14 gauge wire inside of the sleeve here. So you're only gonna to wanna to do a max of 12 amps at 120 volts, which is gonna be 1,440 uh, watts going into the unit. But if you were to actually buy the optional cable that has the twist lock connection that goes into your AC, then you can do 2,400 watts of charging. Now in the app, you can change the charging level. Uh, you are pegged at 12 amps and you do need a code to, in order to open it up to increase your charging. But again, I'm gonna strongly suggest you do not increase your charging unless you have the proper gauged wire to do it. And another way to charge the unit is through solar. So they include a twist lock connection here that goes into the unit into an XT60 connection, or is this a 90? This might be an XT90 actually. Over to another XT90 and then to your MC4 connectors. And the way you hook this up is you connect the two of these put this into the unit and then hook these up to your solar panels. So the max on the solar is gonna be 1,200 watts. The voltage range is really nice. It's between 12 volts up to 145 volts. So you can actually series connect multiple panels together and connect them directly to the AC200L. Now with the lower 12 volt, that leads me into the next two ways to actually charge this. You get a cigarette lighter with the XT90 plug and you use this XT90 plug instead of the MC4 connectors and you can actually plug this into your car. Now that is only going to give you 96 watts of charging which is extremely slow. So I doubt anybody is practically actually going to charge this way. Another way to do it is they have an optional set of alligator clips which has the XT90 to alligator clips and you can connect it directly to a lead acid battery. Now with the lead acid battery, uh, it does have a protection down to 10.5 volts, which I actually think they should increase that uh, protection up to 11.5 volts for the uh, lead acid battery side of things. Just because once you get down below 11.5 volts on a lead acid battery, you're gonna destroy your battery and it's gonna decrease the longevity of your lead acid battery. So I wouldn't suggest actually going down to the 10.5 volts but again, you're only gonna be charging with 96 watts, so it's gonna be extremely, extremely slow. So with all those fun features, how much does something like this weigh? Well, this weighs 62 pounds. So 62 pounds is gonna be the overall weight of the unit itself. And our measurements are, we are 16.5 inches wide. We are 11 inches deep and 14.5 inches tall. Now let's take a look at some of the inputs and outputs that are on the front of this display. 
So if we take a look at the front of the unit, we have our on off switch and we have a display here that is going to show you the state of charge, your AC input, AC output, DC input and DC output and a relative estimation of how much time you have left. There's a lot of information packed into this little screen. You can actually reference the manual to see what they all mean. Now moving down to the DC side, we have a 12 volt 10 amp cigarette lighter socket. And here we have a 48 volt 8 amp output. Now this is interesting. Not sure what you'd use it for. I don't know of too many 48 volt off-grid or camping type equipment. But I'm assuming that maybe in the future they're going to come out with some sort of plug and play thing here where it goes from 48 volt down to 12 volt up to like 30 amps or something like that powered through this uh, socket here which would be great if you know you have it in your RV then you can run heavier loads on the DC 12 volt side. Here we have USB type C 100 watts this is going to be great for charging any type of laptops or any kind of smartphone that can handle that type of current. We have USB A 5 volts 3 amp times 2 so two plugins here and then we also have a, another USB C 100 watt input here Moving over to the AC side, we have 20 amp plugs here, and these are all going to be 20 amps together. And then what's really neat is we actually have a TT30 plug. So this is a NEMA TT30 plug that you can actually plug your RV or trailer directly into the unit. So down here we have a circuit protector, and this is just going to be a push button. We also have a spot for a grounding lug and we also have our battery expansion port. Over on this side here we have some screw on caps and this is your DC slash PV input 12 volt to 145 volt. I would have liked to have seen them print on here the 15 amp rating and then we have our AC input here. What's very nice about all their connections too is that they can only be connected one way so there's no chance of you actually plugging in either the AC or the DC the wrong way. They all have little notches inside of here and you can only plug them in in one direction so there's no issues with the wrong polarities when you're doing your connection. So I've actually been testing this out. I've had this unit for a few weeks now and I've actually been running different various tests on it and I'll show you a way that I've had it connected for the last few weeks. So here in my utility room, both my furnace and my hot water are on natural gas and they both have blower motors in them. This unit has been able to handle the surge capacity of the motors without any hiccups. The furnace uses about 300 watts and the blower motor on the hot water tank actually only uses about 30 watts. It's pretty efficient. As well on this unit, I've had my stand-up full-size freezer, a chest freezer, and also a mini fridge. And this unit has not skipped a beat. It's been powering it all completely with the UPS function. So now I'd like to give you a brief overview of the app for the Blue Yeti. I'm not going to go into everything into detail, but I'd just like to give you a brief overview. So connecting to this was super simple. All I basically did was turn it on, search for Bluetooth, uh, put in my credentials for Wi-Fi, and followed the prompts. Everything connected. So I don't feel it very uh, helpful or useful for me to run through how to connect to the app. So you can see here, you can add a device right there and I already have mine connected. So right now, currently, we have pretty much nothing going on. We have our push button for our AC. You can see in a couple of seconds, there you go, the AC is on. Also with the DC slash USB, we can see that that turns on or off and we can also turn it on or off with the app. Usually it just takes a few seconds for it to relay the information and this is going to be the home screen here. Now let's go into the settings to show you the meat and potatoes of things. So you can see here under settings um, we have working mode so we have different UPS settings here. I'm going to go through these in another video but for now those are the different ones. Our charging mode, so this is really neat, you can do a standard mode, turbo or silent. So this is going to adjust the rate of charge that the unit will take in order to keep the fans either quiet or you can do turbo 
and get your full uh, charge rate. So if you get this unit, plug it in, and you're not seeing it charging the full 12 amps or 1,440 watts, uh, then I would head over here and check and just click on turbo mode, and then you'll get the full power. Uh, if you're, let's say, charging overnight or something like that, and you're not in a rush, then you can just use silent, and that way you don't hear the fans. And even when the fans are on on this unit, they're very quiet. They're not loud at all. So I think even on turbo, it wouldn't bother you one bit. So we have grid self adaption. So what this is gonna do is if you have any voltage spikes or drops, it's gonna adapt. So this is generally just something good to have on. Uh, you can see the power lifting mode here. This is gonna give you uh, extra surge power in order to handle, let's say a hair dryer or a furnace fan turning on or something like that. Uh, we have our eco mode here. So as you can see, because I've been using this as a UPS and it, my fridges and furnaces and freezers do not continuously run all the time, there are dead times. So I don't want this to turn off, um, let's say during like a slow time when nothing's on. I always want my AC to be on. So I actually had this turned off, but you can see here, you can set the different hours. Like if there's nothing being run for four hours, then the AC is gonna shut itself down to conserve power. You can even set at what watts you want that to. So if I go below 10 watts uh, for four hours, then it'll shut itself down. But because I'm using this as a UPS, I don't want the AC ever to shut off unless I tell it to shut off. So I just turn that off. Next, auto sleep. This is gonna be for the screen. Uh, for the recording, I put this on never, but typically I put it on five minutes. And once the screen goes black, I can press any of these buttons up here and it will turn the screen back on without changing or turning anything on. And you can see here on the DC input source, we have self adaptive. PV or other. Now the self-adaptive, that will distinguish between if it's a lower DC rated, uh, like a 12 volt battery, or if you're actually producing solar. PV or other. Other is typically what you would select if you're doing cigarette lighter or 12 volt battery. Uh, you could just keep it in self-adaptive and then it'll just figure itself out. I'm keeping mine on PV because I actually have an array, and which is very interesting. Um, a lot of questions with MPPT solar charge controllers is what's the minimum voltage for an array. So currently I'm right around 40 volts, which is actually less than the rated voltage of the battery, which is nominal 51.2. So what is actually happening is it's boosting the voltage in order to take a charge. And I haven't had any issues. Um, I've been somewhat charging with solar, mostly just in the UPS function, but I've been supplementing with solar, which is gonna reduce my, uh, my overall electrical bill in the long run. So that is the app there. So yeah, that was a brief overview of the new AC200L. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I have a couple more videos I wanna make on this. I need to test some different features and make sure they're working properly in order to show you guys how to get the full use out of this unit. Is this something you'd think about buying? or what are your thoughts on this new lineup? And as always, thank you very much for watching, bye.